In the last video we looked at how we can fill a buffer with some shellcode and then overflow the buffer to overwrite the return address with the address of that shellcode. In this video we're going to take a look at the search engine challenge which looks at a printf format string vulnerability. And again we've got a file to download, we've got a service connect to once we get it working locally. I've already got the file downloaded, I've opened it up in Gearjar this time as well, but let's first of all just have a look at the file type. So this is search engine redacted. It's 64-bit LSB Pi executable again. It's also not stripped. Let's have a look with checksec. And the only thing that's different this time is NX is enabled. So if there is a buffer overflow, we're not going to be able to inject shellcode onto the stack and expect it to be executed. There's still no canaries, so if there is a buffer overflow, we don't need to worry about tripping those off. And we have Pi enabled again as well. All right, let's have a look at the Geardra code. So we've got our main function here. There aren't actually any other functions of interest, so it's all happening in the main function. And there's quite a bit going on this time, so we can trace our way through this. I actually like to run the program when I see that sort of stuff, because sometimes it can look a lot more complicated than it actually is. Let me make the binary executable. Let's run it. And it's asking us to search. OK, so let's just try and put something in. And you see here, you search for, and then it reflected our input back to us, which is immediately suspicious. But it didn't give us any menu options there, so let's have a look at the code a bit closer. So we might want to start renaming stuff here to make this a little bit easier to read through. Let's first of all have a look and see what our input is. It's this local 58. So let's rename that to user input. And you can see that we can enter some different things in here. So it's comparing our input to integrity to swag, to voucher, and you can see that it's printing out these URLs. We can also have a look at these dot data sections. So from here it's printing something from the dot data section. You might want to go and rename those if they're of interest. That one doesn't particularly look like it. If there was one there that had like percentage D as a format specifier, I would normally rename them. You can see our user input up here, the 32 bytes. And we go and start having a look at some of these others as well. We could try out some of these commands. Let's try and run it again and do ls. So it just asks us to visit. All right, we can try who am I. But none of them are particularly interesting. We also had some values up here on the stack, which are defined at the beginning. So we could go in. They immediately look like ASCII. But the order, because of the little Endian format, you can see it's in reverse order whenever I highlight it there and convert it to characters. So what I'll do instead, let's set up a breakpoint. And I'm going to set up a breakpoint here. Let's set up a breakpoint at 11D. So we'll open this up with GDB Pwn Debug. Let's run the program. I'm going to hit Control and C, break RVA and break at that offset from the base address once it's found it. Let me run the program again. And this time we hit that breakpoint. So you can see we've got this literal value, which is currently hex values, is being moved into the RAX. And then we have the same, being another value being moved to the RDX. And then they're going to be moved onto the stack. And then we've got another couple of values, and they're going to be moved as well. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'll step through this, and then we'll actually have a look and see what's at the RBP when we get down here. Let me get down to about here. So let's hit next, 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 next. And then let's do x over 32. Let's do gx rbp minus 30. And then we have these values here on the stack. Let me see. Oh, we can actually see here on the stack. So it's actually showing us the strings here as well. So we've got put falg here, at least 32 characters. So essentially what we know is that the flag is going to be on the stack in hex. So if we're able to leak those values out and convert them then to ASCII, we'll have the flag, basically. So how are we going to do that? Well, we saw whenever we didn't put in a command that was in this list, it's actually going to reflect that command back to us. But it's not doing that in a safe way because printf takes a format specifier, and if the programmer doesn't provide one, it allows us as an attacker to provide one instead. So let's try and run the program again. I'm going to quit GDB. Let's just run the program normally. 
and what we can do is enter in here percentage p you could do something else let's do a few different ones percentage d um, percentage c for characters percentage x for hex percentage s okay segmentation fault the problem was the percentage s let's do that again do that again we'll just do the first ones and you can see that then it's printing out elements off the stack so it printed out the first three as pointers it prints out the next one as a decimal 10 and then as a character so the dollar sign and then as hex as well you could then unhex this as well so you could do unhex and that's actually the percentage p that we entered as a parameter so that parameter that we entered is on the stack and we leaked it off the stack the reason that the percentage s crashed it is because rather than trying to in fact let me let's do that again let me do six pointers because that was where it crashed it was the seventh one that crashed was it oh, I can't use backspace okay it was the seventh one so basically the reason that didn't work is because we didn't try to print this as a string we tried to go to this address in memory and print whatever it was holding as a string so essentially this isn't a valid memory address so there is no memory address that's holding a string or there is no memory address like this that's holding a string which is why it crashed on us so if we wanted to print this as a string we'd actually want to print it as a pointer or as hex and then just convert it to ascii so as usual i put together a pwn tool script to help us with this let's have a look at that exploit.py essentially what we're doing here i've actually set this to do 12 to 16 because that's how many it needs but let's first of all do it with let's do it with 100 first of all you can see I have it set to create a new connection each time let's do it first of all with our local let me comment that out as well IO equals process and then we'll put in our local binary name which was search engine redacted I believe so it's going to spawn the process let's set that to warn as well you can say level equals warn so we don't get as much we don't get we don't want to have output coming up each time it spawns a new process and it's going to send off a pointer this is another way to represent the pointers so let's run the program again instead of doing percentage p percentage p percentage p we can say actually we want you to print the third element off the stack so we'll do percentage three and then what do you want to print it as so dollar and we want to print it as a pointer or as a string or whatever so we'll do pointer and it tries to print out the third element off the stack so that's all it's doing there. So we're going to loop through 1 to 100 each time, print off a different element from the stack. It's going to receive until the leaked value. It's going to take in the leaked value, make sure it's not nil, and then convert it to a string, hopefully. And then whenever we get to the end, it'll build that into a flag for us. So let's try it out. Let's run Python exploit. It runs through, you can see it's actually pulled out our flag here, at least 32 characters, and you can see it's got a lot of other addresses as well. So what I did here was just have a look through this and see where is our flag. You can see it's here, so 10 to 14 or something. Let me go back and see what I had. 12 to 16, okay, so let's change this. Let's try that again. And you'll see this time we have okay it didn't print out exactly what I expected there I thought it was 12 to 16 let's run it against the remote server and find out so I'm gonna remove the process bit let's uncomment this and let's run it against the server yeah alright so the flag is here so these four values of the stack we build them together and we get back our flag in my next poem video, or maybe not the next one, I think the one after, we'll be looking at format string vulnerabilities where we actually use a write vulnerability. So there's also a percentage %n specifier which you can use to write values to the stack. And you can do some pretty cool tricks with that. So st stick around for that series if you're interested. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.